Welcome back to Dreams of the Nameless, where the poor keep getting poorer and Congress wants a raise in this dystopian moment. Uh, we talked about raising the federal minimum wage recently, and now Congress is, uh, they're not passing a bill, rather, they're amending some old bills, or, or there's some weird legal thing going on that results in them getting more salary, a higher pay. Um, it has to do with, they in 2010, they blocked some automatic pay raise system, and so now they're unblocking it by simply not including the language in the new version of the law. Uh, this amounts to, they, the, in the, and I love this article, it came from Politico. They used the words, a modest increase of 2.6% of their salary, which is already $174,000 a year, which means each and every single congressman would get $4,500 more per year. Um, I don't know the exact number of Congress people there are, but I know it's in the hundreds. Um, and so, you know, 4,500 times hundreds, <coughs> it's not a, it's not a, a modest anything. Um, we talked about how the minimum wage in our previous video for employees who receive tip is $2 and 13 cents an hour. The other minimum wage is 7.25 an hour. If you're not getting tips at 7.25, you would have to work 26 days straight to make $4,500. Ooh, I like, I like that statistic. So they want, they want your average poor American to just agree that, oh, I, I'm this Congress guy, I'm important, I need another 26 days straight of your labor for me to keep doing my job. Because it's, it's modest, and it's a, you know, it's a, oh, it's a modest increase. Adjustment. Cost of living adjustment, even. Yeah. Uh. And, and most of these people, I saw a thing about Mitch McConnell the other day, He's literally a millionaire. I mean, he, he's freaking filthy rich. He's been a congressperson for 35 years. And what does he need a modest living wage increase for? Like, you don't. You're a corrupt politician. Like, you're already lining your pockets with corporate money. Um, I'd like to hope, because I don't have solid facts on it, that maybe, you know, AOC and some of these other women that we've talked about are doing a better job and that they're not saying that they need this money or they're not supporting this necessarily, but it's getting really good bipartisan support. And so my fear is they're probably also in on the boat saying, yeah, I want more money. Like as an individual, when you come to me and say, Hey, do you want to raise? I'm going to go, mm, yeah, I do. But when you're a servant of the public being paid out of the public coffer, I think your, your knee jerk should be like, Ooh, mm, you know, maybe we should raise the minimum wage instead. But uh, why are we paying them so much? to begin with. Now, maybe they'll maybe some people can come after me here and <clears throat> is there anywhere in the country where the cost of living is so high that you need to make more than $100,000 to just get by? I know in San Francisco the last time I heard there's some properties there where it's being called like ordinary modest housing where it's, you know, the rent and the upkeep is insane, where literally like four and five and six IT professionals making six figures a year are struggling to keep up on the payments. I don't know if that's factual, but I know that's not like the standard for the nation. So I think there might be some like outlier communities, some outlier areas where, yeah, you need that kind of money. But I mean, to the best of my knowledge, my, my limited knowledge of the housing market, like 174,000 a year is going to get you a decent place to live. I just don't know how, and then to add in another 4,500, so we're, we're really talking 180,000 a year, basically. I, I think I could afford a nice house. You look like you wanted to say something. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I suppose I'm probably just undereducated on, <clears throat> on the economic side of this. It's just $175,000 seems like an astronomical figure for a public service job yeah where and, and remind, reminder these are public servants who sometimes don't even show up and do their job they're literally like there's groups of these people that they just don't show up they don't vote they're out you know campaigning and raising money so they can get reelected, so that they can continue to not show up and not vote uh, and like that's all i want from you read the read the freaking bill show up vote and I'm going to pay you 175000 a year. I think you should just stop complaining and take it and be happy. Call me crazy. 
yeah, I just I don't I don't think that they should necessarily be paid as as much as they as they are. And shouldn't the the Congress be paid a similar wage to what the people that they represent are paid? You know, shouldn't they be paid the average wage of of like a skilled laborer or a waitress or or no, you think that they that they no, isn't there somewhere think... in between like if we take AOC for example, couldn't there be something in between the wage of a bartender and $175,000 a year? Isn't there some middle ground that would be more representative of the people that they're representing? Um, yeah. Cuz where I'm from 175k a year, you're you're pretty wealthy. Yeah. I mean, Especially I if think... you've had the salary for more than a year or two. Yeah, definitely. It doesn't put you up into like upper echelons, but it certainly puts you up into a different class that th those people I do not normally socialize with. You don't, you know, they don't go to the same places to hang out that I do. Like these are the same people that own golf carts and go to the golf course and, you know, do those things that like, I just, I, it's not that I couldn't, but I, I wouldn't belong, certainly. I, I don't have the clothes. I don't have the, the experience. And honestly, like, golf's boring. <laughs> but uh, it's, not, it's not a laughable amount of money by far. And unfortunately, in this case for me, I, I think I have to agree. Um, the guy's name is Senator Richard Shelby. He's a Republican. And Politico quoted him as saying, I think the American people would think that Congress ought to earn it first. Um. I don't know if I, I'm 100% on board with that sentiment because we're, we're going to get into some vague arguments of like, well, what does one do to earn that kind of money? Like um, not have the government shut down? Yeah, for one, for starters. Yeah, we could start there. <laughs> but certainly I like the, 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 the sort of feel or flavor of the statement and that at least this guy's being upfront and saying there's plenty of people like you and I where we, we're not happy with the way that things are being done. And I can't imagine there's a, a majority of people out there going, yeah, sure, whatever, just just get more money. Like, I'm, I don't care that you're doing a crap job or that you're not voting or you're not, you know, passing good laws or, or whatever metric you put to it. Go ahead and take a raid. I, I just don't see that. So um, I think we already kind of covered the couple of questions I had, but I did want to say... I, I didn't find any direct information about the the new freshman Democrats speaking out against this. So, I mean, A, do you think they should be? And then B, like, are there particular people you think are, should be saying it as opposed to, you know, some others? Um, I.e., like, should, should Bernie be coming out? I know he's not a freshman senator, but is he in that crowd of people who should be speaking out? Um, is AOC, is Ilhan Omar, or is it okay that they're probably not going to say anything and they're just going to take the pay increase? I don't know if if I would say any specific person should be decrying the pay increase. It just seems like it, our political moment is not one that lends itself to saying is now a good moment to increase the pay of of our politicians.